Hi, welcome. This is Dr. Kopcha, and I am going to um, talk to you briefly here about formative evaluation, um, and actually more specifically about the types of evaluation we're looking for in Edit 6200. Um, I think anyone could benefit from some of the resources and discussion that I'm about to have, so don't discount it just because you're not in the class. I think there's there's good information that's about to come up here um, that's readily available on the internet. So without further ado, here we go. So I, I wanted to start with a conversation about why evaluation? Why, why is this so important? And if you've never done an evaluation before, you're about to find out why they're so important. But I, I, I tried to capture some of my thinking about this in, um, in, a, in a brief visual. Um, as instructional designers, we're really interested in this dark purple box over here. We want some kind of a learning or performance outcome or maybe a combination of the two and we want to be able to show our clients and stakeholders who coincidentally might be paying us to show those outcomes, um, we want to be able to show them that we've achieved what we said we were, we were setting out to achieve. And the reason why it makes instructional design so fun, at least in my opinion, but also the challenge that it presents is that predicting specific learning and performance outcomes can be really difficult because they depend on quite a few different things. And I don't think I've done all the complexities of a learning environment uh, justice here, but some of the primary factors that play a role in what learning and performance outcomes you end up with are, of course, the content itself, not just what you're teaching, but how you present that content and that sort of thing. The technologies that are involved, the learners themselves and what they bring to the environment, whether it's prior knowledge or, or morale issues or whatever it is, um, what the learner is bringing in particular. And then finally, the environment itself plays a role. So all of these things contribute to the success in you meeting or, uh, in, in a worst case scenario, not meeting a performance or learning outcome that you stated that you would. So if that weren't complex enough, I'm going to add one more arrow here and see if you can get the sense of, of why I added that. It's not just that these four things influence your outcomes. A lot of times they influence each other. So whether or not I've captured all the complexities of a learning environment, the bottom line is that hitting a learning or performance outcome as an instructional designer depends on quite a few different things, and these may just be some of the primary ones, but these things actually influence each other. And so that leaves us with a choice. If we're about to predict a learning or performance outcome, would you rather sit around planning for every possible problem that might emerge and trying to address it? Or would you rather wing it and see what the user thinks and hope that you've hit the mark? Or maybe do a little bit of both. You see, if you try and plan for every possible problem, you're going to find yourself in a, a classic, uh, what I've heard is a classic term, analysis paralysis. You can go on and on and on trying to figure out every possible problem. Not every problem matters. So there comes a point where you have to figure out what problems matter, which one should I be addressing? And that gets us to, to, to line B here. You could just wing it and see what the user thinks. Figure out what problems actually exist and then go from there. The problem with that is that you may encounter a problem that you could have planned for pretty easily. And then when you hit that problem, you don't get to see any more of how your product works because you've hit a problem from the first minute and that problem is insurmountable. And so I think it, as designers, we come to a point where we try and balance the two of these. Of course, we want to plan for a lot of the possible problems, but we can't plan for every single one of them. So we want to do as good as a job we can, figuring out which problems to pay the most attention to, address them, incorporate that into our design. And then there is a little bit of a, an element, sorry, here of winging it where Eventually, you just have to see what the user thinks. And that depends on so many things like how much time do you have to analyze and plan? How much data do you have access to to help you plan? Right. So that's, that's where the art of instructional design really comes in and that 
that design expertise that that we covet in, in master designers and that novices are only beginning to gain a sense of is well, when is it time to wing it? And, and, and that really does all depend on what access you have to people who can try it out and uh, a lot of other resources. So that's why evaluation. And, and you'll come to find as you test your products um, that, that you get better at learning where the balance between these two is. And, and when is it a low risk situation where you can just wing it from the get go? And when do you really have to plan ahead uh, because the stakes are a lot higher? What I want to talk to you about now is when you do a formative evaluation, what should you be doing and what should the reports look like? A formative evaluation, it has the word form and formative in it for a reason. It's an evaluation that informs the design and development process. It's not meant to make a decision about whether the product works or doesn't work, so much as if it doesn't work, how can we improve it and what should we be doing to improve it? Um, they often focus on usability issues and learning effectiveness. And so for this class in particular, we're looking for both an alpha test and a beta test. And if you're looking for some good references about this, chapters 12, 13, and 15 in the Alessi and Trollope book um, are, are really good for this. So a formative evaluation. The entire report, which is going to contain an alpha and beta, uh, for this class should be about a thousand words. Uh, and it's going to contain some basic elements. Who were the participants? How did you assess them? What procedures did you go through? What were the results? What did they tell you about the design and, and the product itself? Now for the alpha testing in particular, the purpose is really to identify and eliminate as many problems as possible. And, and that means that the focus is on usability and content. Okay. Um, if you want to get a sense of all the different factors that play into usability and content, the evaluation form in Alessi and Trollope is a really good one. And um, you don't just need to have the, you know, it's not just the book that will provide this resource. Alessi and Trollope have a, um, an online resource that's excellent for this. So I'm going to, I'm going to flip over to that right now. Um, if you go to the LDT Studio website, there's a link to this, or you can just go to alessiantrollope.com but it's this evaluation form and other documents. And that looks like this. And let me, let me go back one. When you go to alessiantrollope.com, you'll see Multimedia for Learning. Welcome to Alessi. And down here, download various forms of the book. And that's where you'll see the evaluation forms, learner characteristics, uh, constraints. These are all excellent documents that are not only provided in their book, but they've provided for you to use. There's even, I'm going <clears> to <throat> scoot down here for just a minute, there's even storyboarding forms and things like that. So if you don't have the book, uh, by all means look at the resources because they're, they're excellent. The one in particular that we're talking about is, mm, that's not it, hold on, here it is. <clears throat> this evaluation form copyrighted Alessi and Trollope, so this is not my evaluation form, but they do say it's free to use, so that's great. And look at all the things that there are to look at. Uh, language, style, grammar, reading level, okay, auxiliary information, help, directions, things like that. So when you do your, um, when you do your alpha test, these can be really important things to pay attention to, because then when you do your beta test, you can see which ones have improved or not improved. But this gives you a pretty exhaustive list of things for you to be paying attention to during that alpha test. All right, let's talk more about that alpha test. <clears throat> you need a plan for your alpha test. I highly recommend you plan these things out ahead of time and don't just wing your alpha testing unless you have no other choice. Um, you know, for some reason, this group of people just got together and this is the only time you can get them, fine, go ahead and do it. What we're looking for is um, at least three to five people. I want a profile of them. And, and I mean, this, this goes without saying, when you write up any kind of formative evaluation, people want to know who were the people who did the, the alpha test or the review, how did you assess them, and what procedures were followed. Now, for the alpha test, you really want to focus on those usability elements. Let me see if I can find some of them. 
navigation, um, things like that, the, the interface, the displays, the text quality, things like that. Were the directions helpful? Was the introduction helpful? And these are questions that you can ask in an interview or on a survey or something like that. But you really want to focus to focus on, was this a usable product? What was usable? What could be improved? What should be scrapped or, or heavily revised? Now the report, it just adds a couple things to the plan. But instead of telling me what procedures you will use, you're going to tell me now what procedures you followed. Then you'll tell me the results and what recommendations you had for revision. So that brings us to beta testing. All right, so alpha testing, you're really just trying to clear problems out of the way. If for some reason you can go beyond problems and get more information about actual learning, that's, that's excellent. Um, but the real primary goal here is just to make sure that the thing works and that the content is being displayed in a way that's usable. All right, I'm going to um, stop here just so that we have shorter videos and we'll talk about beta testing and formative evaluation in the next video.